to say, it? look at the explosions. Oh, there's the Ezreal. Ezreal. Okay, so that was the other, you know, part part of the AD carries I was mentioning earlier uh, about you can try and go for the survival tactic in these cases. And Betty is a very good Ezreal. Not having that, i sorry, not having that flash available for that combo is going to be a bit sad. Flash in onto on here. Doesn't have the exhaust and a flash of his own. Zenith plays onto Junja to try and get himself away. Exhaust on the Sejuani, not the target you want. Jun trying to join the fray. Elk having to cleanse flash away as Jun is now caught with a shadowing strike in PSG. Yeah, for sure. PSG just going to be able to get these Void Grubs no problem. And if you look at the domino effect of some of those plays, Guess what a mid prial for Yone kid turn into? It's more ganks on bottom side. Junjia could go down back bottom side uh, as well as possible Maple Room. So there, there are a lot of good things building up towards consecutive plays since not only on use summoner spells. Not where BLG expected to be. It's kind of where PSG expected to be, as Betty should be able to go away here. The Zenith Blade going in. Betty trying to trade back onto Elk on. Went in with the Zenith Blade himself. Doesn't have the exhaust up. Now he's taking the Magnus Storm coming out as well. And what is on doing? Looking for the engage, think, thinking Shun would back him up, but he was left to his own devices. And in the end, he's left to his demise. Well, the thing is, one of the players that has been involved in some of these world's winning rosters was Junja, and he's keeping it going. Goes in with the Glacial Prism. The cleanse was available for Elk, and he holds it. The bullet time opens up. Shun going in with the Cyclone, looking to make a Tempest. He'll take one. Junja falls. Woody trying to get the CC onto Shun to keep Betty alive. Shun holds it and dies in the end. Try to flash. It's in the time to take a Drake for themselves. They know they can then go across and even try to catch Knight out, who'll get the Blast Cone. But hey, Junja after he. Well, left the LPL and came in towards the PCS. This guy was an absolute beast, and he's only continued to show up. Has for the cleanse for anything that On has, then has the Arcane Shift and a Flash for so much of what BLG are trying to bring to the table. So Maple gets the first move, can look for a flank here with the Fate Seal, dashes forward, and binds his soul on down to half HP. The Solar Flare goes in with a bullet time, and that's two locked up, and Woody's the first to fall. Maple was distracted by Knight. Betty dashing back in between worlds. Knight can look for more. Maple dives in with a fate seal, but BLG will happily take the triple. So many members of BLG collapsing. Shun cleared out the ward. See, On on his way up as well. TP coming in as PSG. Well, they're not going to do anything to help out Azure here. He's dead. Knight takes it. BLG in. They should be able to take this one first. Maple trying to match, as you say, on the bottom side, but BLG with the TP in. Invests a lot to make sure they fit, take the first turret. And it does give them that gold infusion that they were looking for. For CS down, as expected, in a range into melee matchup in the top lane that was left to its own devices. But it's only about 250 gold mid to cover that mid lane play. So it's a nice read from PSG. And Knight just not wanting to give over that little bit more. If we'll just stick in the bush. PSG are still holding on towards mid. They have push on boss. So it kind of was like a Hail Mary. Tier two here, but they might sacrifice their tier one in mid for it. Elk opens up on the tower, takes it, and the tier two will be exchanged. BLG deciding that they couldn't defend anyway, and so they want to make sure they open up the map. And it's not a bad idea. You do get two towers there for it, so at least it's something, True. but... I'm down this Animal Farm route. <laughs> I feel like the mid lane towers are quite important as well. Now that PSG have managed to get Shadow Flame, two items on the Ken, and Bin will TP to the Control Ward down towards the top side Ash of the, the fight. Jun is in the pit. Azure is behind them. There's a Control Ward there. Betty putting damage into the... On right now, Jun going in with the Cyclone onto the back line, finds Maple but doesn't find Betty. Azu and PSG will disengage the fight, Jun has to flash the wall, but he's locked up with his fate sealed. Bin now in the pit, trying to fight, battle against Jun Jun and Maple, but BLG are all retreating. In the last team fight, they divide and conquer. Can they just get this objective? Uh, Bin uses the Hex to there to see the information. Woody diving in, and he stops Elk from putting under bullet time. The Slicing Mouse from on the back line as well. Knight's in the pit, but Maple puts him in the dirt. Bin now going in for a little bit more, but can't let the counter strike onto Maple. Another is down on his fallen. Control of the entire rift right now. And they got the stun as well onto Elk, who has the flash, and will use it to dash away from any follow-up engage. Sun going in with the Cyclone, trying to make a Hurricane rip through PSG. They'll find one already. Jun stunned up. Azure flashing away from the Soul Affair all the while. Betty and Maple. their performance, where they didn't look as clean as they possibly could have, but yeah. oh, here. Cyclone again from Shun. True Shot Barrage coming out from Betty as well. Between Worlds, Shun just locked up in it. He'll flash across on Falling Low. 200 HP on him now as Betty looks to open up. Fate sealed. The Slicing Maelstrom coming in too. Shun's down. Bin's down. On's down. And BLG are up. It's only Knight and Elk left alive. Can they defend against PSG? The TP is going to come in from Azure. The bullet time to clear the wave. And that might just be enough. There's another wave on its way. 10 seconds from hitting onto the inhibitor tower. 27 seconds on Shun. Knight starting to back away. 
One inhibitor seems to be the prize PSG get for winning that fight. Elken Knight will try and defend at the Nexus Towers and PSG probably won't push for more. They don't invest the TB from Azure. They will retreat after finding that inhib. They, they're the ones that have to pull out the surprise play. I think a lot of people forget that this TP was... Behind. Oh, hang on, TP, TP yeah, behind. Woody's going to be engaged on here, but On is now in the meat grinder. Maple goes in with the face sealed, and Azure is just waiting for his opportunity to open up. Bin's taken one. The Slicing Maelstrom will find another, though. Betty being chased out by Jun. He'll flash away. Jun dies to Betty, and Betty survives. Bin diving in onto Maple, who can unbind his soul and then dash back. Jun just trying to keep the dragon aggro for now. Maple! Put into the dirt by Bin. PSG still have two alive. Elk's going to try and keep the dragon aggro, but Betty can do a lot of work from a lot of range right now. Elk has the bullet time coming up in seven seconds. Junja trying to heal himself back up in the jungle. Elk there makes it rain. Bin going to try and get for the reset. Elk still full HP. Bullet time, no flash, no... Well, it has the flash, but no cleanse. Bin TP's in. Junja's looking for it. And Elk oh. finds one. The shutdown, he'll find another great cleanse from Elk. Junja able to survive, oh but Bin God. will take the Drake. The soul, not quite, but PSG. Bin. On MF, because you have that strut on. That solar flare was a mile wide. On, gets caught with the Glacial Prison, has no flash, has the exhaust, will get away for now. The world's between as Woody trying to escape, but he's just burst out by Elk. Those four items coming to the fore for BLG. A Cyclone onto Jinja, who has the flash Big. as well. The bullet time comes out, the Slicing Maelstrom, as Bin is trying to dive across them. Betty and Maple, the only two left alive for PSG. Maple will flash, but the bullet still... The bounty gold, both objective and champion going the way of BLG. Huge. That tower down, mid lane turret is taken by BLG. The gold swings in their favor for the first time in a long time in this game. I think there is an angle for PSG though to create pressure on this top side. You already look at where Maple is. Yeah, Junja able to dodge away from On, puts the Glacial Prism back in him, down to half HP. The Mystic shots from Betty and On is off. Betty now locked in the pit with Knight, but do you really want to be locked in there with him? The TP in from Azure as well, looking at that slicing mushroom. Remember, there's no exhaust as well, because On is down. No flash for Azure, but the Drake up, and Soul on the cards for PSG. If they can find it, TP behind by Bin, as they're looking for the pincer movement. PSG trying to get the push through mid, through Maple. Bin still looking for that flank. Woody's going to try and mark him. They see him. The counter strike goes in. The bullet time as well. Azure's ripped to pieces. Fate seal from Maple isn't enough. Bin diving onto Woody, and that's two. Betty. Forced away, has to dash away from Shun, and Bin is just doing so much work on the back line. It's a double for Elk. The flank sublime from BLG. At the end of the day, it's Bin Jax in back-to-back -back dragon fights. He gets the job done, and with the Baron buff, BLG are inside the base. And it just helps out Elk so much. The bullet time is perfect. The flash away from the Yone ult as well. Elk needed to be that follow-up and damage and he's putting PSG down. It's Betty's time to shine. He opens up on Elk, who tanks the tower. Bin going in with a counter-strike as well. They'll just take one next to Tower for now. But Betty gets the slow. Knight goes in, and Betty dashes away. He can't survive the weirding. Puts him six feet under, and now BLG will open up on the second Nexus Tower. Woody going back in, looking for Bin again, but Bin somehow still survives. PSG wiped away under their Nexus Towers. Azure spawns just in time to watch the Nexus fall. Jay Scott, but never really had a strong foothold. You only yeah. saw like very small instances of it. So I do like, you know, pulling pulling it out here. It gives them the possibility of that double poke. Oh, you know? There's already 49 stacks left on it. So he's over halfway towards completing it. But because of the way that they then push the lane out, you oh, see oh, Junja oh, actually oh. getting caught here as Jun going in for the engage on with a great hook. And Ginger falls for first blood. And to your point, Medic, this is what Prime BLG looks like. This movement from on, constantly shifting around the map, holding positions so then he can get out and work his magic. And now Maple is running, hoping that he can find some sort of way to teleport out of this jungle. But short of magic or a miracle, I think he might be done for. And he gets clipped as well by the accelerated shock blast, meaning an execute is no longer an option for Maple. Shun should be able to chase him down, who dashed across the wall with a flap, flap, flap. Knight still chasing here. Glacial Prison used just to make sure that this dragon is going extinct alongside his buddies. Knight will secure the kill. His second is the one that I really want to ah, funnel on. You got to point it somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Try and get some on Maple, who's about 700 gold behind in the mid lane, and maybe more, as there's the flash engage from Shun. Maple down again and Shun. Solo queue recently and in ARAM, but 
Uh, Kobe, do you want to elucidate why he may have gone this? Ah, uh, well, it's obviously because of the world song, Heavy Lies the Crown, and uh, it's, uh, it's a crown. Also, <laughs> if you can't get a murder book, you need a murder crown. <laughs> oh, as we see, Shun getting caught up here. BSG trying to fight it. Bing going in with the Counter-Strike. Woody misses, but gets the charm, doesn't get the knock-up, and now he needs to get the hell out of there. Death Charge onto Ginger. It's another for Knight. He's stacking the hubris. Put them back under the ground. Knight finds kind of. Uh, you know, one for one on trades for ultimates and flashes used there with Woody investing everything. Maybe that can open up a place for PSG to attack. It's just, it's so difficult because the, well, set up with a teleport, maybe they... So Betty has no Feather Storm, but does have a cleanse in the flash. On's trying to get on top of him to get the staggering blows down. They're going to land the dredge line onto Woody. Oh, right. So you get stronger through the course of the fight, through your hubris, which is probably why. Yeah. Around this bot side to keep this tower alive. Maple's here as well. Shun is going to meet him. Impale lands onto one. The dredge line short from on. Elks, though, still looking for the plate. There's one minion still alive. On will now tank up the tower, and Woody will have a grand entrance and give on a grand exit. I mean, that, that's actually big. Any bit of gold that PSG can get at this stage in the game uh, could be very big for their dream of team fighting their way out of it. And, Shin is going to be able to execute no problem, does get all the way into enemy territory. Uh, so no further you know, benefit gain there, but still even being Smash able back to... across the wall from on to rejoin with his teammates. PSG are looking for that fight. Ginger very tanky with the Zeke's convergence. Maple still stacking up, sneezing all over BLG. Woody looking for that flank, has the quickness, has the flash in a couple of seconds. The engage with the Glacial Prison. Featherstorm coming out from Betty, quickness from Woody. They're looking for on, but the Death Charge will lock him up for a second. On now, sacrificed by BLG as PSG managed to find a kill. Bin still pushing in the bot side. Jun being chased out by Aja, but doesn't quite land the sun into the wall. Jun just still looking for Elk, who has the cleanse, but goes for Knight instead. Pulls him back, where's the damage? It's Aja right now. The Keeper's verdict is that Knight is guilty. His hubris has been his downfall as Junja puts him six feet under. There's no way BLG had the correct timer on Aja's teleport, I feel like. You know, they, they kind of... The silver lining of getting bot tower was just answered by top for PSG. Now, BLG will get this tower, but you can already look at bot side and see that PSG are going to trade as well. So what had been a good start for BLG is really starting to disappear as Aja now solo under the tower. This could be a bit of risky play. He has the Keeper's Verdict in a few seconds, still has his Flash. Betty trying to come across as well. He's met with Knight. The Accelerated Shock Blast doing a lot of work on. Looking for that turret. TP coming in from PSG as they look to collapse. On not tanking the tower yet. Has that Concussive Blow. Setfast Presence coming out. There's the Quickness. It's only onto the tank so far, but on to the first target. Glacial Prison coming down as well with Slow Maple for a second. But Junja's here to join the Barney to join the fight. PSG find another bin. is ping pinged to hit that mid lane tower. But there's still a couple of seconds before he can get on it. Betty's going to try and answer him. He has the Demolish and five grubs, it will be enough to take the turret. But it's the exact same thing again. Not really sure how they want to approach this. Aja has his teleport up, but he's still going to run there. Terra goes down, and now if this Poppy shows on the wave, Jace TP's in. There's the TP in. Aja can TP as well. Will answer with one of his own. BLG moved up as four for now. Bin's going to join them. Junja trying to get in towards the pit to take the Drake. On locked up. The Blade Caller coming back as well, and Junja will land the smite. But Woody goes down first, Shun and Bin, the next two targets. It's support for support so far. Azure still looking for a little bit more. Knight trying to put the damage down from long range. That's what we talked about with this composition, their ability to poke. But in this fight, they haven't really had the opportunity to do so. Junja can look for a little bit more. Chucks a rock across the wall and hits. Knight in his back. PSG trying to open up towards this mid lane tier one. Elk and Knight here to defend. There's another wave on its way, though. Yeah, I mean, Jace can try and poke, but you've got two fat tanks in front of you. Can't really get the damage around Ooh. them, forces the flash with just the raw Skarner oh, ultimate. With the last whisper in his inventory, Maple still sacking up a little bit slow as the hook goes down onto Junja. There's the double impale into the grand entrance, but the charm coming back with the quickness into the blade caller. Look at the CC, look at the suppression on BLG, and look at the flash forward from Betty. He tries to get onto Elk, he can't quite get the damage down. Elk somehow survives through the burn. Through more. Behind. Elk not here, Knight the first target, Azure. 
Locks him up for a second, on going forward as well. Azure still trying to chase Knight out. Bin here to join the party as on flashes away. Keeper's verdict on Bin is that he needs to come back in a couple of moments. He's going to TP behind them here, but perhaps PSG have a moment in the 4v5 to really open up. Mon comes down, the Featherstorm used as well, but Bin finds the four-man stun on the back line. El cleanses away the Blade Caller route, and once again, it's Giga Bin absolutely styling on Fools. LG. I'm sure their fans were not worried at any moment in any, no. any game in this series. No. LG once more. And the important thing for the poke comp is to be ahead of the curve in terms of items, in terms of damage, and that's exactly where BLG are now. 6,000 gold, their lead. They have three items on Knight. They have two and a half, almost three on L, and just constantly putting damage into the backs of PSG. And every comp with a Bin Jax is just a Bin Jax comp as well. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if you have a Sejuani, but he, he's too over 2,000 gold uh, ahead now as well, working on the Frozen Heart so he can be a tank in the middle. On looking for the hook here, onto Azure, goes in with the depth charge as well. He's impaled the quickness on the back line, but already BLG have taken one kill. It's one for one so far on, and Azure falling. Betty having to pop the Featherstorm. Bin, bin, bin. It's Bin, baby. Already we see Elk killing off Betty. Bin looking for a little bit more as Woody dashes out of the fight. Bin wasn't even really needed, just forces PSG away. Now the tier two in the bot lane, the target for BLG. It's a nice attempt from PSG, but Bin on the flank sets up for BLG to take the fight. Now he's back on towards mid, and he's healthy as you like. Maple has hit that execution threshold, and it looks like PSG are trying to collapse onto Bin. No flash for him, no way out. You gotta feel. Goes back in with the counter strike. No Who needs a way out? This is Ben we're talking about, and then he He's dashes away with a leap strike. First game in the early game until FlyQuest really began to take it away. They're still looking for more here, though, as Ginger goes in with the impale. The quickness coming out as well is stopped by the depth charge, but Knight is locked against the wall, and Bin, even he can't rectify this situation, can't bail them out. The bait caller back onto On, who has to flash away himself. Elk now joining the battle, a double counter strike as the engage goes on to Azure, but BLG have only found one so far. Betty's on that front line, no feather storm for him, and Bin finds it again. I doubted him for a second, but he makes you believe that Jax is the most OP pick in the game. It's Bin again to clean it up for BLG. Bin decimates PSG Talon, and with that, they will be bearing out of the world's championship. But for BLG, it's only one more step on what is a long road ahead of them. BLG are looking to get to two and two to challenge for the quarterfinals to continue to level up as they defeat PSG and go to the next round. And welcome back to the stage for this post-game interview with Knight and Wendy. Thank you so much for joining me, Nihao. It's been an amazing series, but also a lot of back and forth between you and PSG. Can you talk me through the expectations you had coming in today against this team? 那首先恭喜你们获得本场比赛的胜利 so maybe before today's game, we try to hive this this kind of man side like, mm -hmm. okay, guys, have no pressure. But actually playing on stage, we feel like there's still some pressure on our shoulder. So hopefully in the future, we can fully enjoy the moment of playing on stage without any nerves and pressure. Interesting. I will follow up on this a bit later, but I wanted to ask, um, why Shun instead of Wei today? But I so it's actually based on our screams results and also this is also decided by our coaching staff. All right, well, I guess it made more sense here to play with him today. Can you tell me about Jace? We haven't seen this champion at all, mid lane especially. Do you think it's the type of champion that we would see again and why did it make sense in this draft specifically? 那说到这一局比赛不得不提到你的一个杰斯其实也是在这一次世界赛当中还没有在中路见到的英雄想问一下为什么会选择杰斯这个英雄觉得在今天的这一场比赛当中为什么他会是一个比较好的选择未来我们
to be honest, I really feel Jace is out of meta a little bit at Wolves, but it's actually the champion I'm very comfortable with and really got the confidence in. Because of this, I pick it on stage today, but in the future, I like to rethink about the, my choice as well because I think Jace may not be a very strong pick here on stage. All right, you talk about confidence and I want to follow up on this because I don't feel like BLG has been playing to the fans' expectations, especially considering the fact that you're LPL's first seed. Is this a confidence stage issue or is there anything else going on for you guys? 那其实你刚才也提到了是个自信的英雄嘛就大赛经验可能也没有那么丰富就我们会接下来一场比赛就用比赛去调整的 so I think why we have some fluctuation maybe here on stage is because there's some players who are not that kind of experience. So sometimes we still be a little bit nervous playing here and definitely we're going to use our stage performance to prove ourselves and also use a stage performance to just enjoy the games. Do you have one final message to the Western fans, Nate? 那最后有没有什么想对大家说一点的呢? Thank you very much. We are fighting. We are fighting. BLG is indeed fighting. Thank you so much, Knight Sheshe, for the interview. Wendy, thank you so much for the translation. And BLG moves on to the next stage. They stay in it, indeed. They're not quite in quarterfinals yet. May I just shout out the exceptional PR training uh, of our LPL players? Because, you know, it, it, was, it was perfection. Also, the question in terms of um, why has the performance not been there? Lack of experience is cited, which I think, I don't really agree with that, right, as a, as a reason, but it's, it's a great answer, nonetheless. Yeah, no, it's kind of a non-answer. You know, we'll <laughs> give it to him. Uh, you know, obviously the players are pretty experienced, especially compared to a lot of the names and faces, but you never know, new environment, you know, new studio, sure. maybe there is some adjustment. studio, we've heard things. We yeah. can give them, whatever the reason is, the performances <laughs> up until today certainly were not there. Uh, yeah. And while today was a hot mess, I think at this point, if you're BLG, you're happy to get the wins where you can, and I also you want to think when you're looking at the way that the regions are combining next year too, right? Like yeah. it's not even if he doesn't retire, it's kind of a sunsetting of what the PCS was going forward into APAC. So him on this PSG talent team, they couldn't get it done, but you know, uh, I still think he is a stellar player that people really should remember within like a whole esports canon. And I think even if there wasn't going to be this kind of combination of leagues or these merging of regions, like you would still look at the context of the PCS as mm -hmm. pre and post Maple. Yeah. <laughs> right? Like, because this is a guy who just has always won, has always won. And that's, that's something that no player has really ever been able to match in any region. There's no comparable level, I think, of domestic dominance anywhere else in the world. And so he will always be this focal point and he will always be this historic point for this region uh, as long as League of Legends is played. Yes. We're gonna miss you, Maple. Thanks, Maybe. For, the, thanks Maybe. for the memories. Maybe. If you do choose to retire, <laughs> otherwise we'll gladly, we'll welcome gladly you back. still talk yes, about yes, you. Yes. <laughs> also, you blew my mind there for a second because you said pre and post Maple, and I was thinking things like pre and post Faker, pre, pre and, and post Caps. Caps. Yeah, and it's the same Oof. thing. Well, there right? was a pre weird like Yurkson, you I have think, to include the detour, right? Because he sure, went, sure, the detour. Yeah, 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 yeah. LPL yeah. and then like a yeah. Yeah, please Caps to the and then came back to PCS. Oh, Caps, please don't go to the LCS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I might have done a little bit of a narrative there, yeah, given yeah, that there were like, a decent Whoop. number of years where he wasn't just in the region. European but caster narrative detected. Look, sometimes you got to spice it up for the people at home. You do. I think the statement stands, even if some of the details are a little... Oof. Speaking of <laughs> spicing it up, give me that Swiss bracket, because we are heading towards <laughs> some possible 2-2 two two matchups that are... A possible nightmare for the Western teams, I'm just going to say it. Uh, regardless, though, we're going to go ahead to tomorrow first. We have Fnatic versus Weibo. This is all elimination. And TL versus Gam. Um, oof, I, oh, yeah, Fnatic, Weibo. That's going to be really, really difficult for Fnatic. I'm just going to say it. I think Fnatic are in free fall. Yep. I would love to see them find their composure because I think they can have a fighting chance. They come in at full strength. But that last series kind of took away the last little bits of hope because you could see them really lose the plot and the other times this year where they've collapsed like that, 
they've needed time and they have been able to come back swinging. But this is a very tough turnaround to go from such a losing game, such a, cat a catastrophic game, to then needing to show up in a best of three versus Weibo. It's a really tall task. Yeah, TL, same yeah. vein, right? Yeah, and then, I mean, TL, I know Jan talked about it when he was on the desk, but it's like, this is the grudge match, right? Like, GAM were the team that eliminated TL previously last year. This TL roster has not been performing to their own expectations, right, of what they wanted to do here. And on the side of GAM, man, what a story, right? Like, they stuck with this roster post, uh, like, everything that went yeah. on in spring. Mm -hmm. They grew together over summer, and now they're here fighting to continue their tournament. Like, I, I think GAM is, like, a really great story, actually. Yeah, make them believe it's made for them. Yeah, really, exactly. It really is. So I don't want to do it to them, but I want to kind of simulate a result. Um, so just see it as not jinxing, okay? Let's say it, expectations, I think, could say that Weibo survives and TL survives. Then the 2-2 two -two pool is DK, Fly, G2, BL, G, TL, Weibo. That's crazy. I think if you're a Western team, you're hoping to draw another Western team. But you only have one chance. Or DK. <laughs> yeah. Because DK are a hot mess. Or, uh, be, actually, to be fair, you can maybe throw Weibo. The remaining team, LCK and LPL representatives are all a very messy. Depending like these series on are close. their performance against yes, Static. Yeah. Because yes. I do think Weibo can regroup. I've talked about what a surprise it was that actually LNG was the first mm -hmm. LPL seed out. Um, but yeah. It'll depend on how Weibo look against Fnatic as to how confident I am All right. in them. I'll say one more thing for GAM. If they do knock out TL and then they get matched against another LEC or LCS representative and knock them out, they will have just killed more LCS and <laughs> LEC representatives than any LCK or LPL team at this tournament and probably yeah. this year. Like, that would be insane. That is something that, while I would hate to see it because I have a lot of love for TL, obviously, uh, knowing that region so well, it would be incredible to watch. Oh, these last two days are going to be insane. I, I Give me a fun have, time. have a tummy <laughs> ache already. I'm so nervous. <laughs> That's it from us. We're going to take a break on that um, you know, great note. We're going to be back tomorrow for those elimination matches at 2 p.m. Central European Summertime, 8 a.m. Eastern U.S. for more Worlds 2024. Uh, get a good night's rest, and we'll see you then.